started one by one. Um, so if you look at the question number one, right? Um, our mm-hmm. source system is OLAP, which contains only the current data, which is connected to the live systems. How do we then test source to the staging? See, a source system is uh, not. It's a, uh, yeah, it's not OLAP. It's OLTP. Yeah. So OLTP, which contains only the current data, which is connected to the live systems, and how do yeah. we how do we then test the source to the staging? See. When did mm-hmm. when I did explain you about the when I when I explained you about the architecture architecture of the project, so we are integrating mm-hmm. a data from a transactional system to the staging area. So okay, always whenever you are pulling the data from a transactional system, we extract only the incremental data to the staging area. See, um, when you are testing the data validation between a transactional system and the staging area. you need to figure out like what is the amount of data that you are pulling so that is nothing but the cdc or a change data capture or an incremental data okay so that incremental okay. data logic will vary from one implementation to another implementation okay so you need to find mm-hmm. out that incremental logic and then do it so if you refer the videos in the etl testing videos what we have discussed when you go to the yeah. fact load within the fact load you have both the scenarios where you have validated the data for a historical loads and where we have validated the data for an incremental loads so when you are validating okay. the data between a transactional system to the staging area it's a incremental data that we validate so the validation procedure doesn't changes i mean the kind of testing that you are doing whether it is a count validation or any other validation it doesn't change it is the same thing so the way how you mm-hmm. validate the data between a staging area to a dimension table or a staging a- staging to the fact same kind of test mm-hmm. cases we write and we validate the data okay right so in your project often the data is loaded daily weekly or a monthly see uh, you can say this it depends upon the requirement most of the scenarios your etl loads are scheduled on a daily basis and some of the mm-hmm. aggregated fact tables whichever is built on the warehouse is done on mm-hmm. a weekly or a monthly basis whichever is ha- having a high volume so you could say there are a, both the type of jobs which are there which are scheduled on a daily basis or a weekly basis you can do that. okay okay if the source mm-hmm. system is a flat file and incremental load is applicable or it's possible into the staging area possible you see uh, a flat file system also it can be an incremental you know when your upstream system is sending a flat file if they are sending only mm-hmm. the data which is modified or changed within their system they will send the incremental file they don't send every day the entire data what is available in their application i mean in, in their system to us for processing the data they send the incremental files only so that logic how they are writing the data to an incremental flat file it's up to the source system which is sending you that data so when when yes the incremental load for a flat files is applicable but you don't need to define a extra logic actually so in the etl mm-hmm. level when the etl developers are developing it you don't need to develop an extra logic whatever is available in the flat file will pull that information and validate the data so you could say if somebody mm-hmm. ask you uh, when you are when your source is a flat file is your incremental data is applicable then you could say yes it is applicable mm-hmm. because our source mm-hmm. system is already sending the uh, modified data only to us so we are not applying any filters mm-hmm. we are just validating the entire data what is available in the flat file versus the staging table okay that's how you need to explain okay right okay next question yeah. i have two excel files how will you check the file which load it is in i am not sure what what do you mean by that if you could explain then probably uh, i can uh, no even i am not sure about that question this was a question Did you get this question, or you got it from some forum? Uh, uh, no, no, I got this question. Where in the interview? Uh, yeah. I I have two Excel files. Will you check the file which load it is in? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe uh, if if you want to identify the file from which you are loading the data, that can be determined. um based on the file name basically we can capture the name of the file when we are uh, processing the etl data 
based on the mm-hmm. file name we can determine from which excel file we have loaded the data that that can be done oh, okay okay so the next one is about the how many etls you have run till now see it is just a generic figure okay when somebody ask you um, in your uh, project currently let's say i have around some 50 jobs and as an mm-hmm. etl tester you may not be running all the 50 jobs for this no you can say that okay mm-hmm. in my current project um uh, whatever the work that is assigned to me i was uh, working uh, i mean i was almost running 10 to 15 etl jobs to test the data mm-hmm. that's how it but is. as a tester how do we run the etl jobs we are uh, assigned only the, the uh, monitor right power center yeah. monitor yeah you can even run the run the things from the monitor but some of the projects you'll even have access to the workflow manager also so if you have workflow okay. from workflow monitor also you can run it but workflow mm-hmm. manager if you have access to the workflow manager you can run it so you could say that in my current project they didn't give me access to the workflow manager but i was not running it but my old project i was running the workflows where i had access to the workflow manager something like that you can mm-hmm. find the question but usually uh, jobs are scheduled what's the user of running it see uh, when you want to do it on a ad hoc basis let's say now the job is supposed to be scheduled on a, at 5 o'clock in the morning okay now today mm-hmm. is that i have to give a sign off for my testing so i can't wait till tomorrow mm-hmm. to test that defect right i'll go manually and mm-hmm. run that job and see okay, okay whether that defect is fixed or not so okay if the jobs are scheduled yes uh, as per the schedule it will be triggering but uh, in general mm-hmm. when you want to run on demand you can go and run and test that mm-hmm. fine right now when we go for a test data creation explain how you created it see a uh, test data creation is purely uh, you need to identify which are all the source tables are involved and what kind of mm-hmm. data that is available in all those tables and manually you need to write a insert script there is no other way uh, else if you have suppose let's say i explained you about the insurance project that time we talked mm-hmm. about the guideware so guideware has a front end mm-hmm. whenever i want to create a mm-hmm. policy or whenever i want to create a claim i go to the front end uh, mm-hmm. java application i can create the data that which in turn mm-hmm. will add the data to my oldp system whenever i run the load mm-hmm. automatically the data will flow in so see uh, it's it's a two ways to look at it now uh, approach one is that if you have a front end uh, application you can go and create the data over there that will get uh, that mm-hmm. will add the data to your transactional system else you have to do mm-hmm. back end activity if you don't have a access to front end application you need to do the back end activity which says okay insert into so and so table claim table claim id is this all these you have to do there is no other way mm-hmm. and you need to understand uh, the data. And, uh, can i say my customer used to give me the data mm, customer yeah you could say that okay um during the uat phase they used to provide us a data in the form of excel and we used to convert that excel data into insert script and then load the data mm-hmm. just for a testing purpose okay. but as a tester okay. if you have to do that you need to write a insert script there is no other way to do that or we used to import that data into table something like that you can say mm-hmm. we used to prepare the data okay. in excel and used to import it that also you can say that okay fine right. so what data are you loading in your data warehouse so what kind of data you are loading which is used for analytical i mean which is segregated or separated based on the dimensions and facts so we are storing measurable mm-hmm. data i could say in generic it is an analytical data what you mm-hmm. okay. okay so what is a composite key and how is it differs from others see uh, generally a primary key is something that uh, when you enable a constraint it maintains the unique values on a particular column mm-hmm. okay so composite mm-hmm. key is something like you know uh, suppose let's say i have a table something like this you know where i have a project id and i have mm-hmm. a, a employee id and uh, mm-hmm. the assigned number of hours on a project so let's say the project mm-hmm. id 1 for employee id 100 and the hours is equal to 4 which we have and similarly the mm-hmm. project id 1 and uh, employee id 101 and uh, you know the assigned number of hours is maybe 8 hours 
for this. And I have a okay. project ID 2 or project ID uh, 2 and you have the employee ID as 100 and then the number of hours as a 4. See, in this type of a scenario, if you look at it, you can't define a primary key on the project ID because project ID is being repeated for a multiple times. I can't create a primary key on the employee ID because the employee ID is being repeated for a multiple times. So, so the primary key now we are going to define on both the columns because the combination of these keys is going to be unique. So if okay. I'm defining a primary key on two columns or more than one column that is called as a composite primary key. So okay. the combination of this is going to be unique in the table that is called as a composite. Oh. So when you say how it is different from others, basically in general we will create a primary key on one single column but here we are defining it on the yeah. more than one column that is a composite key. Okay. okay, what are the initiatives that you took in your project? That is a generic question. So when you say initiatives, you can say that, you know, um, maybe the kind of, uh, you know, the reusable solutions or something like this, you know, when, when they say uh, any kind of a reusability that you have done in your project or any kind of a new thing that you have implemented from your project level and all. So you could say mm -hmm. maybe the, you can say that, okay, uh, since you have more experience, you could say that, okay, I was actually involving in preparing the reports, status reports, and I was also reviewing mm -hmm. the queries which are written by the other testers, whether it is uh, mm -hmm. as per the functionality or not. Whenever they, uh, somebody mm -hmm. has an error with respect to the uh, uh, syntaxes and all, I used to correct them. So all these kind of things, mm -hmm. you can say that. Uh, basically, these are the initiations which I have taken. And I used to, you know, the mm -hmm. involve in the knowledge transfer for the new, mm -hmm. uh, new big, uh, new joiners. And I used to interact with the development team to understand the requirements. And I used to explain them. And I used to assign the work. All these kind of things you can say that as an initiative from your end. And maybe the, you know, the across the projects, uh, some of the uh, across the projects, some of the implementation or the queries we used to reuse them or something like that. So you can. Mm -hmm say that as an initiative okay. okay so when you say what is a universe see the universe is actually a metadata which is built in the business objects you know um, in your project I mean in your resume if you have kept the business objects then they might have asked you about it but when you say uh, OBIE and tableau the universe is not a, a word that we use it's basically the um, uh, universe is related to the business objects. You could say that I didn't hear about this term or something, or you could say that I worked mm -hmm. only with the uh, reporting tools like OBIE and Tableau. In OBIE, we used mm -hmm. to talk about the RPD, RPD as a metadata layer, mm -hmm. but I didn't hear about this term universe. You can say that. If you have kept about, okay. if you have kept the business objects, then you can say universe is like a metadata layer in the business object. That is a universe. Okay where okay. they build all the joints and everything for a report. So what type of reports mm -hmm. that you have used? You see, um, when you see the in the videos, right, the reports and all, mm -hmm. we have seen the different kind of reports, like a bar, bar graphs, pie charts, mm -hmm. and funnel graph, all these kind of reports you can explain. And these reports mm -hmm. were part of a, some okay. dashboard or something that you can say. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's again the same question. What type of reports yeah. you have tested in the BI report? That's a list, bar graph and all those things. Mm -hmm. okay. In OBIE, have you have the browser-based tools like Answers, Analytics? What is in case of a Tableau and Cognos? You know, uh, in OBIE, yes, uh, it's the Answers or Analytics can be accessed through the browser. Even in case of Tableau also, if the Tableau server, if the Tableau is a server, you can generate the reports from the smartphone. You can generate the reports from the browser. Even in Cognos also, we generate the reports from the browser. So uh, basically, any reporting tool, when you talk about these three, OBIE, Tableau, and Cognos 8 or whatever, everything mm -hmm. can be generated from the browser. You can say that. You know, Tableau, okay. uh, in case of a Tableau, you can say that for uh, testing, we were using Tableau desktop also. I mean, it's, I think it's explained mm -hmm. in the videos. Uh, Tableau desktop, mm -hmm. how it is used. You can say that we were using Tableau desktop 
and also we were using a tableau server uh, tableau server level mm-hmm. reports used to be validated using a browser but you can say that okay so for a bi testing are you using a data modeling sheet or a er diagram see it's not the data modeling sheet or a er diagram that you are using for a bi report um in the etl testing document which i have provided right in that uh, mm-hmm. i have sent you one document uh, mm, where is it okay i have sent you one document called as a source to target mapping or something i don't know whether i have it here uh yeah the okay. bi source to target mapping what is it i think yeah see this one so for each and every report what we have and what is a column name and what is a presentation column name and what is a physical column that is available this kind of a sheet will be provided to you so based on this sheet you can determine which column is coming from i mean which which presentation column is coming from which physical table so you can say that there mm-hmm. was a source to target mapping sheet which was built mm-hmm. um, and that uh, that sheet will tell you what is a presentation column name and what is a physical table used in the warehouse and what is a physical mm-hmm. table column based on that we used to prepare a query and validate that's what you can say it's not the uh, yeah, this it, document i don't have <laughs> i don't have this document i forwarded you well, as part of this you can check that if you do not have yeah i'll also okay. need to send it okay okay so um, yeah so you could even say that yeah data modeling we used to receive and also along with that uh, <clears throat> the bi testing document is used okay Okay, how is Agile methodology used in your project? That you need to know. I mean, Agile Scrum methodology, how it works. You know, basically there will be mm-hmm. a sprints, maybe for forty-five mm-hmm. days or sixty uh, days. For each sprint, mm-hmm. you have uh, some different reports and different ETLs have to be tested. And every day mm-hmm. for a sprint, you'll have uh, meetings, Scrum calls, mm-hmm. um, all those things mm-hmm. will be there. So you can say that yeah, mm-hmm. for every sixty days, we used to have one release. and we used to interact okay. with uh, i mean we used to uh, test the different kind of reports and different dashboards for each sprint okay so what is there in so the each yeah, sprint is fortified as 45 to 60 days that you can find out you know and general agile okay. methodology fine fine what is there in the brd document and can you name the components in it okay so the brd document uh, in general it will contain the information about what is a source system <clears throat> which target mm-hmm. system you are loading the data what etl tool is being used and <clears throat> what mm-hmm. reporting tool is being used what kind of reports have to be uh, generated by the user or uh, used by the user what are all the different metrics what is the column names all those things will be there in the brd document mm mm-hmm. okay uh, the last one is my question so can i say uh, it's just that you could say in both the ways we used to write that in the uh, excel sheet and we used to import that into hpl and that's what it can say okay so we used to have a same template as alm and we used to import that yeah i have three more questions uh, what do you mean by informatica errors see when the informatica is processing the data uh if there mm-hmm. are errors which are thrown by it and that errors will be written mm-hmm. into some error log file that is called as informatica yeah. informatica errors means while processing the etl it might throw a different mm-hmm. errors like right so suppose let's say when it is reading a data from a file file is not available it will throw the error saying mm-hmm. that file not found that is an informatica error so those are all mm-hmm. kind of errors which are thrown that is an informatica error mm-hmm. okay uh now in my resume i have put sql server as my source in the project so do i need to know about the sql server yes you might uh, have like to know the commands yeah you mm-hmm. need to know that sql server commands and in that case it becomes a heterogeneous mapping right so yeah, how do you do that uh, so how do you do that column level validation especially that uh, minus query yeah. like uh, you need minus to query. column at um the column names from uh we have sdbu 
dot employees we can't use the db link but what do we use in heterogeneous case yeah either you have to use a file or you need to get that data into excel and compare each and every column that is only the way or you just get that data into two different files and compare the both the files using the uh, file comparison tools like exam diff file validators and all those uh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about a file. If uh, if the source is a relational database, I'm saying the same thing. Yeah, if your source is a SQL server and your target is Oracle, you can't compare uh -huh. the data as you said by the database link or something. Okay. Now what you need to do is okay. you need to export uh -huh. the source data into one flag file and export the target data uh -huh. into another flag file and compare both the files. Uh -huh. Flat file one versus oh. flat file two. If there are differences, then that is something wrong with your ETL. Else, you can get mm -hmm. both the data into Excel and compare each and every column. That's mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, the last one is uh, uh, Unix commands uh, in WinSAP and uh, Putty. Only in Putty we need Unix commands uh, to navigate through the folders. Yes. WinSCP okay. is like a GUI, so you don't need it's just that you need to use a mouse and navigate through the folders. Okay. Yeah, fine. Fine. This was my questions. Nothing else apart from it. Okay. All right then. Thank you.